Good evening, friends. Stephen Bernoon here with Israeli News Live. And, you know, the question and the title of the video here is, will the president run the White House from a nursing home? And I don't really say that as a joke, and I don't mean it as a slam either against President Biden. I know there's a lot of people that don't like President Biden, and but there's a lot of people that love the man as well. It goes both ways, right? Same thing with President Trump. And quite frankly, with President Trump, think about it, he'd be in his 80s as well when he finishes his term if he actually wins the presidency. Oddly enough, as close as it seems with all the bumbling that President Biden has been doing, seems like he may could very well end up in a nursing home if he were to win again. Um, and, and listen, I know firsthand from this. My own father was the same age as President Biden. And of course, he also ran a major corporation. I consider the U.S. a major corporation. And uh, he would not relinquish running that corporation almost until his dying day. And he had dementia. And he was in very, very bad shape. Loved my dad very dearly. Uh, but I could see him as he tried to run this major corporation that he owned. It went right into the ground because of his dementia. But yet, seemingly, he still, that was the one thing that he still had a fairly good mind on. And I was told by doctors, that's because he's done it his entire life. Joe Biden has been a politician nearly his entire life as well. This is the reason why, to some degree, he can appear like he's functioning very well. But the signs of dementia are very obvious. And I don't say that lightly. I say it very sincerely. And I really wished the people that surround him would take that more seriously instead of just brushing it off. Here's one of the blunders that we find the president in right here. I'll just share some of these with you. You know what was happening? It had to put on their windshield wipers to get literally the oil slick off the window. That's why I and so damn many other people I grew up have cancer. That's one of them right there. <clears throat> now, that's not the real reason what he had there, something totally different. Here's the president in the uh, presidential debate with Donald Trump just the other night. And Donald Trump still seems to be very sharp and very quick with his mind and everything. Uh, and luckily, he did not criticize uh, President Biden because of his uh, blunders, which he has done many times before in the past. But listen to this part here, where obviously President Biden is just not, as well as he tried to stay in the game in this debate, he could only do so well before it finally showed again that he is suffering, obviously, from some form of possible dementia, at least allegedly, I would say. And do is fix the tax system. For example, we have a thousand trillionaires in America, I mean billionaires in America. And what's happening? They're in a situation where they, in fact, pay 8.2 percent in taxes. If they just paid 24 percent, 25 percent, either one of those numbers. I mean, they've raised 500 million dollars, billion dollars, I should say, in a 10 year period. We'd be able to right wipe out his debt. We'd be able to help make sure that all those things we need to do, child care, elder care, making sure that we continue to strengthen our health care system, making sure that we're able to make every single solitary person eligible for what I've been able to do with the uh, with, with, with the COVID, excuse me, with um, dealing with everything we have to do with, uh, look, if we finally beat Medicare. Thank you, President uh, Biden. President Trump? <clears throat> As you can see, you know, now President uh, Trump, he doesn't, he doesn't criticize him. He goes on and kind of just deals with one part of what he says here. Uh, but obviously, President Biden is definitely struggling. And it's very obvious. I mean, it's so obvious. It's even come up in White House briefing as well. Uh, before I get to that, though, let me just share a couple of other moments here with you here. Here's another one right here. A free zone. Is a Taliban takeover of Afghanistan now inevitable? No, it is not. Why? Because you have the Afghan troops have 300,000 
well equipped, as well equipped as any army in the world and an air force against something like 75,000 Taliban. It is not inevitable. Do I trust the Taliban? No. But I trust the capacity of the Afghan military, who is better trained, better equipped, and more, re- more competent in terms of conducting war. I stand squarely behind my decision. After 20 years, I've learned the hard way that there was never a good time to withdraw U.S. forces. The so-called Great Recession. The president asked me to be in charge of managing that piece, then President Trump. Excuse me, Freudian slip. That was the last president. He caused, anyway, that was President Obama when I was vice president. These are the things that I'm talking about right here. So even though the title may seem a little bit uh, humorous, it really isn't humorous. Uh, We'll skip this one here. I'll go right into this one right here. This is where uh, one particular journalist straight out asks the question, and of course the aide answers right according to script, no doubt that she's already been trained to answer to, but sadly, the situation should be addressed. And I do believe that uh, some of the people around uh, President Biden are taking that more seriously, as we've seen Obama escorting him off stage, things like that. They're taking it seriously. Kamala Harris would love to be in the place of presidency, but so many people that I know have said she has just not got what it takes to be president of the United States. So who would be a better candidate if, for some reason, Biden is taken out of the running. Of course, he's the only one that can make that decision. But as I've said before, people with dementia just do not back down. They still believe they have what it takes, and they won't accept any other way. They know that there's trouble with the memory, but they think that's all that's really going on. Listen to this journalist here. And you, you may not like it. The president may not like to hear it if he's watching. But I think the American people need to get a yes or no answer on this. Does President Biden, at 81 years old, have Alzheimer's, any form of dementia or degenerative illness <coughs> that <coughs> cause these sorts of lapses? And it's a yes or no question. And if you don't know, why don't you, as one of his senior staff members, know? I have an answer answer. for you. Are you ready for it? It's a no. And I hope you're asking the other guy the same exact question. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. (laughs) You know, it's funny, though. She said, I hope you're asking the other guy the same exact question. But the problem is, is uh, former President Trump has not made those same types of blunders. I'm sure every president at one time or another has made blunders. There's bloopers and everything else about every president that comes along. Uh, probably the closest we ever had was that of uh, former President Ronald Reagan. But, uh, but now we're dealing with 2024. And it's a very serious issue that we're facing here. So I want to kind of share that with you there uh, before we go into some other issues here too. Um, Strike kills family as Israeli evacuation order sparks panicked flight from the southern Gaza City. I want to thank Charles on uh, Twitter there for sharing some of these news broadcast clips with me here. It says here that uh, the Hamdan family, around a dozen people from three generations, fled their home in the middle of the night after Israeli military ordered an evacuation from the southern Gaza City of Khan Yunus. They found refugee... Uh, with extended relatives in a building further north inside an Israeli declared safe zone, but hours after they arrived, an Israeli airstrike on Tuesday afternoon hit their building in the town of Deir al Bala, killing nine members of the family and three others. Uh, and all five children, three women, were among the dead, according to the hospital records and relatives who survived. What a tragedy. This continually goes on and on and on. You know, I sit there and I look at this video here, too, put out by the IDF. Terrorists targeting our soldiers and threaten civilians by planting IEDs. Uh, What civilians are they threatening? You know, their own? Well, maybe they are, but, you know, it's interesting, you know. I mean, I guess Israel forgets that it's a war. And Israel has pretty much leveled the entire Gaza Strip. These people are fighting for their lives. 
Even the civilians who want no part of this war, it's right down between Hamas and the IDF, but yet Israel posts these uh, images as if the Gazan people are the ones that are causing all these mayhems. No, it's not. And it would be really much better if there was, in fact, a ceasefire fully. And even a ceasefire will never bring back the more than 40,000 lives that have been lost. Here's a very interesting article here on Twitter, too, that I uh, that was shared with me by Charles. Um, verified document from Israeli Mil uh, Ministry of Intel uh, Intelligence in October of 2023. Now, th by the way, this is that document right here. You can screen capture this. Uh, you can translate it if you want. It, it is accurate, but let me read to you what we have here. Uh, suggests forced displacement of Gaza civilians to Egypt would yield positive and long-term strategic results. The advisory document envisioned a three-stage process, including the establishment of tent cities in Sinai and opening of humanitarian corridor, followed by the construction of cities in northern Sinai, from which there would be no return. So this is Israel's strategy right here. That's the strategy. That's the plan. Well, we kind of knew that all along as one of the reasons why to level Gaza, to force the Palestinians out of their homes while there's no homes left. What are they going to do when the war, even when the war is over, what do you do? There is no home to go to. There's hardly a livable building anywhere in Gaza. And even then, what will Israel do? They will say, well, in order for us to go in there and to rebuild, we're going to have to level the place. We're going to have to bulldoze everything. You're going to have to leave anyway and go live somewhere else in some tent city somewhere. Sounds just like all the other tent cities in different countries, Jordan, Syria, etc. What about all those I think there's an estimated 23,000 children buried under the rubble. And now they're fixing to start a war with Lebanon. And as I mentioned in a video on, uh, you know, we do our teaching every Thursday night, which will be tomorrow night, by the way, at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, www.stephenbenun.com. You can join us there. It always gets posted on Patreon. I actually loaded that video finally, the one that I did. I give a little portion here on Israeli News Live, but I loaded the entire thing here recently for you guys. How you know who the Antichrist is. The video is definitely going viral. Since I've just started doing this video, it's already grown almost a thousand views just since I started this video. Uh, it was uh, about 700 views, I guess. And since I started before, because when I, I just now looked over here, it was at 61,000 something when I started getting ready to film here. And now that I've jumped back, it's already jumped up that high. Um, it's one of the, it's the teaching from last week, last Thursday night. Now you know who the Antichrist is. Now the odd thing is, is when I did the video, uh, I wasn't planning on naming it that because I didn't know I was really going to go in that direction. But what what I prove is through the book of Daniel and through the prophecies that Jesus spoke about in Matthew 24, specifically from the Hebrew Matthew, because Daniel or Jesus talks about when you see the abomination which make a desolate standing in the holy place, know that even summer is nigh even at the door, right? We remember that scripture. In the Hebrew Matthew, he actually says the Antichrist. He is the one that is the abomination that makes desolate. The Hebrew Matthew is the only place you'll ever find that at. And then I show you through the book of Daniel, chapter 7 specifically, how that the one that comes to change the decree, uh, or excuse me, the, the, uh, the, uh, the time, is it the time or the season? One or the other there. And the law. It thinks he can change the times and the law. But the word is not actually lost. The word decree. And as a result, thinking he can change this, that decree, according to Ezra, was the king's decree, because Ezra was a contemporary of Daniel. 
he's the one that would take and change when the temple should be built. The temple was being built for the Messiah 2,000 years ago. That's why about 2,500 years ago, Cyrus sent them back to their homeland. They rebuilt the temple. They did everything that was supposed to be prophesied of doing. But Daniel also prophesied that a beast would come up and he would want to rebuild the temple, but he would actually change that decree. He would change the timing of when that decree was to be fulfilled. Instead of it being fulfilled 2,500 years ago, he'd fulfill it in this day. That's why Jesus refers back to it. He's referring to that beast, and that beast is the Antichrist, and that Antichrist is the one that will actually put together the third temple. That's how you know who the Antichrist will be. When you see the very one that brings forth the building of the third temple, you will see that Antichrist standing in that place there. He is the very man. That is how you identify who the Antichrist is. So now you know the one that brings about the building of the third temple. He will be the Antichrist. This video is going viral. Already another hundred views, I guess. It jumped just while we were talking about it just now here. Uh, it's definitely worth watching. It's, it's very long, very tedious, because when I'm in those meetings there and I'm doing these teachings on Thursday night, I just take my time. we got a handful of people that always join us there. Like I said, you're welcome to come. If you don't see it after that, go to our, vi our, our, our channel on patreon.com forward slash Israeli News Live. I post those teachings there. A lot of them on there. A lot of interesting ones. Occasionally, I pop, pop them up over here. I always kind of have been doing that. But we are getting a lot deeper into things that I'm getting to the point where I kind of feel that the very deep teachings I will probably keep there and release more teachings that are a little bit more tolerable for the public here. Anyway, I appreciate you watching. We thank you for your support. IsraeliNewsLive.org is our website, and uh, you can support the work there. Uh, or patreon.com forward slash Israeli News Live, another way to support the broadcast. Thank you and God bless you.